In answer to our major question as to whether shots came from a direction other than the book depository building, indicating other gunmen and a conspiracy, we have eye or ear witnesses inside the building saying the shots came from there. Now, Mr. Holland, who was on the railroad overpass here, insists that he heard a shot from here. And in Mark Lane's book, Rush to Judgment, he writes that 58 out of 90 people who were asked about the shots thought they came from the grassy knoll. Now, expert opinions differ. All the experts agree that the shots could have come from the rear. But where some experts, such as Dr. Hume, say bluntly that they did, others, such as Dr. Wecht, find it highly unlikely. CBS News concludes that the most reasonable answer is that the shots came from the book depository building behind the president and Governor Connolly. But if the shots came from the rear, and if there were only three of them, can all the wounds be accounted for? The president was struck at least twice. Governor Connolly was wounded in the chest, the wrist, and the thigh. One bullet was recovered intact, as well as two large fragments. The Warren Commission concluded that of the three bullets fired, one missed entirely. One struck the president's skull and fragmented, and the third, this one, passed through the president's neck and went on to inflict all the governor's wounds. This is the single bullet theory. And so we must ask, could a single bullet have wounded both President Kennedy and Governor Connolly? Now this is what the report says. Although it is not necessary to any essential findings of the commission to determine just which shot hit Governor Connolly, there is very persuasive evidence from the experts to indicate that the same bullet which pierced the president's throat also caused Governor Connolly's wounds. However, Governor Connolly's testimony and certain other factors have given rise to some difference of opinion as to this probability, but there is no question in the minds of any member of the commission that all the shots which caused the president's and Governor Connolly's wounds were fired from the sixth floor of the Texas School Book Depository. Unquestionably, when the first shot was fired, I recognized it as a shot. I thought of nothing else but that it was a rifle shot. Uh, I turned to my right. I had time to think. I had time to react. And I turned to my right to look back over my right shoulder to see if I could see anything unusual, and particularly to see if I could catch him out of the corner of my eye. Because I immediately him, thought... Him, you mean the... The president because I immediately thought of an assassination attempt the moment I heard the shot. I didn't see anything except just the general blur of waving of, of people moving, but nothing really unusual. Uh, I did not see the president out of the corner of my eye, and I was in the process of turning back to look over my left shoulder and had, had about come to the point where I was looking straight forward again when I felt the impact of the bullet that hit me which entered the right posterior chest close to the shoulder blade and coursed downward along the chest wall, taking out and fragmenting a portion of the fifth rib on the right. The bullet then emerged from the chest, evidently struck his right wrist, fracturing the lower portion of the right radius, and then entered the left thigh where it was spent. I am convinced beyond any question of a doubt that the first shot that was fired did not hit me. Then I was hit. And I was not then, and I'm not, I have no memory no recollection of the sound of the shot that hit me. And beyond any question of a doubt, the third shot did not hit me. The commission countered with the news that Governor Connolly was merely struck a glancing blow to a red, thereby explaining his delayed reaction. The hard evidence which conclusively demolishes the commission's case is that more grains of metal were found in one of the governor's wounds than were missing from this bullet. The commission's autopsy expert, Commander Humes, testified, I do not understand how it could possibly have left fragments in the wrist. As to the fragments in the governor's thigh wound, Commander Humes added, I cannot conceive of where they came from this missile.
Well, through the tortured English of that paragraph, a sentence that begins with however and has but in the middle, we can make out the commission struggling to paper over internal dissension. It's unfruitful to try to puzzle out the meaning of the statement. Instead, we ask Arlen Specter, assistant counsel to the commission, and now district attorney of Philadelphia, and the author of the single bullet theory. The possibility of one bullet having inflicted the wounds on both the president's neck and the governor's body uh, came in a very gradual way. For example, the first insight was given when Dr. Humes testified based on his autopsy findings. And at that time, it was made clear for the first time that the bullet that went through the president's neck hit no bone, hit no solid muscle, and according to Dr. Humes, came out with great velocity. Now, it was at that juncture that we wondered for the first time what happened to the bullet. Where did the bullet go? The probability is that it went into Governor Conley because it struck nothing else in the car. That is the single most convincing piece of evidence that the one bullet hit both men because looking down the trajectory, as I did through Oswald's own rifle, and others did too, the trajectory was such that it was almost certain that the bullet which came out of the president's neck with great velocity would have had to have hit either the car or someone in the car. It's stated in the Warren Commission report that belief in the single bullet theory is, quote, not essential, end of quotation, to supporting the conclusion of the Warren Commission report. Now, can you describe for us any other theory besides the single bullet theory that would support the conclusions in the report? The commission concluded that it was probable that one bullet inflicted the wound on the president's neck and all of the wounds on Governor Connolly. But you could have three separate bullets striking under the sequence as we know them. For example, the president could have been struck at frame 186 of the Zapruder film, which is a number given to the Zapruder film. Then Governor Connolly could have been struck some 42 frames later, which would be a little over uh, two and a quarter seconds at about frame 228 or 229. And then the third shot could have hit President Kennedy's head at frame 313, which was pretty clearly established. So that it is not indispensable to have the single bullet conclusion in order to come to the basic finding that Oswald was the sole assassin. The commission's dilemma lay in the fact that it had to choose between two unpalatable alternatives in order to make its case stand up. Having decided that three shots were fired and having three sets of wounds to explain, the commission could only find either that all three shots hit their marks or that one of the three bullets hit two men. But if all three shots hit, then one of them would have had to pass through the president's neck, emerge at 1,800 feet per second, headed on a downward path, toward the midst of the presidential car and the six people in it, and vanish in midair, hitting nothing and leaving no mark. Well, this was more than the commission could stomach. Despite its own words, the single bullet theory is essential to its findings. In our national lead, a new version of what might have happened to the magic bullet that was key to the official story of the assassination of President John F. Kennedy, according to the Warren Commission report, this is in a new book called The Final Witness, A Kennedy Secret Service Agent Breaks His Silence After 60 Years. The book is by one-time Secret Service agent Paul Landis, who was then in his late 20s and provided security for the First Lady, Jacqueline Kennedy. Now, Landis's book is adding to the controversy over what has been called the magic bullet theory, a reference to the Warren Commission's conclusion that before the fatal shot hit Kennedy in the head, a single bullet recovered almost intact passed through Kennedy's throat and continued on to seriously wound Texas Governor John Connolly in the seat in front of Kennedy. Landis was in the car directly behind President Kennedy's limousine on November 22, 1963. He heard the shots and he saw with his own eyes much of what happened. It, it, it does seem as though this new account uh, calls into question the, you know, the so-called magic bullet theory that, that um, perhaps this, this provides new information but it doesn't necessarily change the conclusion of, of who assassinated President Kennedy. I mean, is that what you want people to take away from that specific part of this larger narrative in your book? When I wrote my book, all I wanted to do was tell people 
what I saw and what I did. I was not to take away uh, from my feelings. Uh, I had never read the Warren Commission report. I wasn't interviewed. I expected to be. Uh, I was afraid I would be because I was afraid I was going to break down and be an embarrassment to the Secret Service. The bullet was found after it rolled off a stretcher at Parkland Hospital during the tumult that followed the arrival of the two wounded men. The man who found it was Darrell C. Tomlinson, senior engineer at Parkland. There was a doctor that went into the doctor's lounge and he had to pull this stretcher out. When I had taken off the elevator and whenever he came out he failed to push it back up against the wall so I just stepped over and gave it a little kick to get it back in line. And then I turned to walk away and I heard a rattle. I turned around and looked. Didn't see anything at that time, but I walked back over to the stretcher and there was this bullet was laying there. So I picked it up, looked at it, put it in my pocket. Do you recall, uh, was there any blood on the bullet? Or? Was it a, how did the bullet look? Well, it was copper-colored bullet. And uh, I couldn't tell whether it had blood on it or not. I, I really didn't look for it. It was a spent shell. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, now, as you think back, uh, is there any doubt in your mind today that the stretcher on which you found that bullet was the stretcher that came off of the elevator? Well, I know that. That I know. I just don't know who was on that stretcher. But the stretcher was on the elevator. Right. And this was the elevator that Governor Connolly would have taken or would have been placed on to go to the uh, operating room? Is that Yes, right? sir. That's, that's the one he went up on. Critics have claimed that, in fact, the bullet came from the president's stretcher, which would rule out the single bullet theory. But the president's stretcher was never in that elevator. And consequently, Mr. Tomlinson's recollection disposes of that particular dispute. It does not dispose of another claim, however, the claim that the bullet was planted on the governor's stretcher as part of a plot to link Oswald to the assassination. Now, that claim can never be disproved. The bullet is almost intact, only slightly flattened, with a little cone of lead missing from the rear end. Could such a bullet have penetrated successively a human neck, a human torso, a wrist, and a thigh? and emerged in this condition. Another former Secret Service agent who was with Landis that day was Clint Hill, who was famous for climbing onto the back of the presidential limo, attempting to shield the occupants as shots were being fired. Hill says this new information Landis brings forward is different from the story Landis revealed to him in 2014. Hill says Landis actually came to him in 2014 and told him what he did after they arrived at Parkland Hospital with the president's body. That after the president and Mrs. Kennedy were moved out of the car, Landis stumbled upon something. He found a bullet almost completely intact, which he picked up and he put it in his pocket and he said he brought it into the emergency room and dropped it off on a uh, gurney in the hallway. Landis is saying now that he placed that bullet on President Kennedy's gurney inside the trauma room, not on a gurney in the hallway.